Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion Node Breakdown. Today's node is the Light Trim Node. So we're going to jump into Fusion where we actually have our setup from yesterday's node, the uh, Cineon Log Node, and what we did. And if you remember, we had our uh, media in. And then we actually used Mocha to stabilize this footage because it's uh, pretty shaky from these uh, drunk people on our uh, wedding party bus and after that we added a Cineon log node so we can work in linear format we added our little VFX here but then we used that same tracker to transform our text so it followed along with this uh, unstable drunk footage and then we took it from linear back to Cineon log so our uh, output was back in our original uh, raw footage. So what if in our footage we needed to uh, say up this exposure, which uh, I know we can do in, in when we're color grading and all that other stuff, but if we needed to do this within Fusion, we could use the light trim node. And the light trim node emulates a film scanner light trim. And it, it works best for log data. You can use it for other things, but its primary use is any footage with log data and primarily Cineon, Airy, or Blackmagic raw files. But you can use it when there's any log data present. So we're going to bring in a light trim. And we're going to use this to up our exposure. So I'm going to keep this on our original Cineon log so we can kind of look at uh, what's going on as we uh, change this light trim. Now how the light trim works is you can unlock your RGB and A and work on them individually or you can leave it locked and work on all of them. And how this trim button works is this, this slider kind of shifts the, the color in the film, optic printing and lab printing points which means for every eight points of shift equals one stop of exposure. So if I put eight, that means we just upped it by one stop. 16, two stops. 12, one and a half stops. So you get the point. So every, every eight points equals one stop, whether it's up or down. Now, the one thing, if you're reducing your exposure, if you're bringing it down, let's go ahead and bring this down to minus eight. You see something's going on here. We're kind of going into a transparency. It's not just shifting the image. So if we bring in a uh, merge node, and we'll bring this into our foreground, and bring a text in to our background. That's right, transparent. You can see that's transparent. We can we can start seeing that behind there. So as we trim down, it starts adding this transparency to it. So what you're going to want to do anytime you're going negative exposure is merge it, but add a uh, black background that way your image is no longer transparent but we're going to uh, get rid of these and pump that back in let's change our light trim back to eight to up it so now we can get in here and work and do anything we need to do, do any of our VFX and uh, work on what we need to work on with the correct exposures. And once we're done and we change it back to our Cineon log or our log file, whatever we're using, we need to make sure we add that light trim back in to remove it. If you want it removed, if you want to leave it up in exposure, that's fine. You can do that. But if you want to bring it back to its original footage, you want to make sure you bring a light trim and paste it after your Cineon lock. 
because all these light trims have to go before when you actually have log data, before your Cineon logger any color uh, changes or transforms, and then after any color changes or transforms going back, it's gonna be your last node going up. So if we go into this node, since we upped it by eight, we wanna bring it down eight. But remember, because uh, we brought it into the negative, we're getting transparency. So we wanna bring this into our foreground and bring this back into our background. So our, now our media out is just like our original footage. You can see it's back with our additional VFX. So that is the light trim node. I will see you in the next node breakdown.